Now, if you do everything right, how old can you live to be? Is it worth all the effort? I believe it is. Here's one. Christian Mortensen from San Rafael, California in August of 1995 turned 113. August of 1996, he turned 114. He's still going strong. Certainly can live to be 115. Uh, smokes a couple of cigars a day like George Burns, who also lived to be over 100. Uh, certainly was, I guess the only exercise George Burns ever did was put the cigars in his mouth. This gal here, Dora Ramathebe from South Africa in July of 1995, turned 114. And when she was asked by the media, Dora, what do you attribute your health and longevity to? She did not say that we owe it all to our annual physical, our, our HMO. She said, I ate locust every day. You know, a little grasshopper. She's not a vegetarian. She eats little animals. Pumpkin seeds, tortoise meat, wild herbs, dried fruit, and starts each day with a cup of coffee. This gal here, Margaret Skeets from Radford, Virginia, in 1994, was the oldest documented living American when she died at age 115. Fell over and fractured her hip. Three weeks later, she was dead from complications of osteoporosis, a simple calcium deficiency. And we'll talk more about this in a minute. Unfortunately, this is not unusual. 75% of all Americans over the age of 65 who fracture a hip or major leg bone don't live 90 days. They die of pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, stroke, and other complications of that fracture. Susie Brunson, according to her family, in December of 1994, was the oldest American when she died at age 123. And they base their claim on her birth date, December 25th, 1870, which was recorded in the family Bible. And this fellow here, Francisco Barrison Wave of Chaparina, October 1995. He was from a little town outside of Bogota, Colombia, turned 125. When he was asked by the media, Francisco, what do you attribute your health and longevity to? He said, well, I drink a gallon of goat's milk every day. Also, it's kind of fascinating in his birthday announcement. This is not an obituary. This is a birthday announcement. He said that over 40 years ago, his physicians told him he only had a couple of months to live, so he had his sons build him a coffin. And uh, he's been waking up every morning for more than 40 years, sitting by that coffin, waiting to die. <laughs> Good night time comes, he goes to bed, wakes up the next morning, sits by the coffin, waits to die. Now, he's still going strong, and all the doctors who told him that more than 40 years ago are long since dead. Now, this fellow here, Hamoudi El Abdullah from Syria, died at age 133, and he was still fathering children after the age of 100. He um, remarried for the fourth time when he was age 80. Fathered four boys, five girls, nine children after the age of 80 with the same wife. And we add up the pregnancies and the breastfeeding, the time in between pregnancies, he was still fathering children after the age of 100. Now this very next one is my very, very favorite. This gal, Mazumi Dusty from Iran, according to the Rocky Mountain News Wire Services out of Denver and the Iranian News Agency, this was January of 1995. She died at age 161. Now, you have to give a certain amount of credibility to this obituary report that she died at age 161 because she was survived by six living children ranging in age from 120 to 128. They hadn't even left home to go to college yet. <laughs> now, her oldest son, Golam, said his mother had never visited a doctor nor taken any chemical medications during her life, did take a few herbs. So if you kind of think about it, every one of these people who lived to be over 100, 120, 130, 160, these people are not from the United States or Canada or Germany or England. Kind of interesting, isn't it? They're, most of them are from third world countries. They're furthest away from medical help, and they live to be old. So that we're beginning to collect information here. The last one we want to look at, the National Geographic Society, a very respected group of uh, people, scientists and, and so forth, and support groups for science, uh, comes out with a monthly magazine, the National Geographic magazine, of course. And they, uh, in January of 1973, came out with a nifty special issue on longevity. They, they looked at cultures whose people live to be 120. And they documented the oldest living human being that they could find based on their criteria. This fellow, uh, by the name of Shirali Mizmalov from Azerbaijan, a little country just south of Russian Georgia in western Russia today, they documented him as being 167 years old. Remember, this is the National Geographic Society, not the National Enquirer. 167 years of age, and they had a half-page picture of him actually harvesting tea leaves in a tea plantation, still working eight hours a day, six days a week, when he's 167. Five months later, May of 1973, Shirali Mizmalov turns 168, goes out and hoes the garden for reporters to show how vigorous he is. Now, for at least 50, maybe 70 years, medical doctors in America have been poo-pooing the idea that you could live well beyond 100. You know, people who lived 115, 120, they were one in six billion. It wasn't something that everybody could look forward to. And anybody who tried to teach people how to live to be 110, 120, 140 were considered charlatans and quacks and taking advantage of uh, older people. I was glad to see this come out. Uh, this was a news article in the USA Today newspaper in October of 2000. And it was based on a article in the journal Science, a very respectable journal. And what they said was, forget 100, try living past 120. 
Humans possess a maximum life expectancy longer than 120 years, which has been the long theorized medical limit. In fact, lifespans appear to be increasing over time with no end in sight. Now, the cute part of this is, now that there's no doubt about it, everybody agrees that human beings, including Americans, have the genetic capacity to live well beyond 120. And doctors want to take credit for it. The things that have actually increased our longevity from 45 average lifespan in 1895 to 75.5 today, which is an increase of about 30 and a half years, are sewers and good clean water, public health things. We don't have cholera and leptospirosis and tuberculosis in our food supply and our water supply anymore. We have meat inspection, we have um, public water works and things, we have sewers. These are the things that have extended our lifespan.